to uh, not only talk about, uh, you know, what we have seen the last yeah. couple of days in Florida, which, you know, now that we've gotten a couple of days of some sunshine and, and seeing the devastation down there, I think people look at the storm coming here going, is, are we going to get the same exact storm? It's much weaker than it was what hit yeah. Florida. It is much weaker, and, and that's good news, but we yeah. are looking at a storm that does have a history of destruction, and we always look at, okay, where is it going next to see mm -hmm. the kind of impacts that it can have. I'm fairly confident that the impacts we're significantly going to see here in the Carolinas is going to be in the way of flood. Wind is still a concern. That storm surge will be an issue towards the coast. But I'm more concerned further inland for folks who are going to see an abundant amount of rainfall in a very short amount of time in an area that hasn't seen a lot of rain for quite some time. And that's going to lead to the potential for flash flooding this afternoon and evening. It's not a question of if, it's only a question of where. In terms of what we're looking at right now with Ian, it's sustaining the winds at 85 miles per hour. Its movement is north-northeast at 9 miles per hour, and it's highly lopsided. This is also what makes me nervous about the storm. We're more familiar with those symmetrical tropical systems that have a well-defined eye, and that's not the case right now for Ian. We are starting to get a little bit of a closed-off eye, but the moisture is highly lopsided because of the barrier of the cold air to the north, which is having all that rain dump out before it has the ability to wrap around. So the moisture extremely lopsided towards the coast of the Carolinas, and we're just feeding more of that that's going to be kicking up into the Queen City. So while the rain starts creeping in, we're expecting heavy downpours close to home, and the landfall likely going to be later on today. Maintaining its strength as a Category 1 storm, I think the brunt of that is going to be towards the north and east of it. The major wind winds that push into Myrtle Beach and surrounding areas, maintaining that tropical storm force and that tropical storm strength crossing the border of South Carolina and North Carolina as we get into the overnight hours. That continues to bring the significant wind and rain, and that tapers off as we head into your Saturday. So our potential to see tropical storm force winds 90% in that purple 30% in the yellow, and you see Charlotte kind of falls somewhere in between in that yellow and orange, where orange is 60%, 10% over further towards the Western Carolinas. So how much rain do we get? A significant amount. You notice the most amount stretching up towards the Queen City here, which is also where we have the high risk for flood concerns for today. That's where I could expect to see some of those flash flood warnings later on today while we have the hurricane and storm surge warnings in effect along the coast. Tropical storm warnings in the red up towards the Queen City. So timing it out, this morning starts the heavy rain south and east. That pushes throughout the late morning hours into the Queen City and really takes over this afternoon and evening before tapering off overnight. And then we have those totals upwards of 2 to 4 inches, wind gusts of 30 to 40, even 50 miles per hour at times. And, of course, we'll continue to keep those 60s through the weekend. And early next week settles back into the 70s with overnight lows in the 50s.